Well, we are here in December, and, and we're sitting in uh, Mayor Mason's office, and it's, uh, it's really good for you to have us over, Mayor. Well, thank you, Bill. Thank you and Kobe for coming by this morning and uh, looking forward to talking a little this morning about the, the, the year and the, what we see coming and yeah, all I, that. So. I, I'm, I'm glad you want to do that. I, I know 23, uh, 2023 has been an interesting year. I had a lot of good things happen. A lot of good things. Uh, and, and I, you know, the, some of the things that come to mind uh, with me is, is that uh, uh, a lot of people have had to raise taxes and had to do this and that. Well, we've been pretty stable here. We, in we have County. been stable here since uh, 2019 when we had to do our last one. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys surrounding counties, and I think it was a third of the counties in the state this year, did raise property tax rates for the simple fact of, and I, it would it would be like me trying to explain rocket science to you to explain that ratio. Uh, we will be in ratio this coming year, so we're kind of sitting with bated breath wondering how that's going to go for our tax rates and our revenues. Uh, basically, it's a system to, that balances out your commercial business property taxes, personal property taxes versus uh, real property. So. It's, right. it's and, and and right now the legislature is looking at that and that's going to be one of their topics this this session about whether or not how they're going to adjust that and fix that because you know you saw you saw some some counties even some local counties that saw uh, a 30 40 percent drop in in their penny value due to the fact that uh, they had you know the ratio came in out of balance because right. and it was and we're seeing it because right now you all know, everybody knows the, the land price, we're seeing land prices and house prices in Smith County that are just prices and, and values that we never thought we'd saw. And that's caused a, a jump, <laughs> jump in those appraised values. And then your real, your real, your pr personal property, your equipment, business equipment and things like that doesn't take that jump. So you're getting an out of balance. And so the state had all had put in a position that was supposed to balance that out. And when you do that, you lose over here to make this match. So that's something that, uh, you know, they're gonna look at this year. And uh, I know uh, Comptroller Mumpower is really involved in that and trying to help that because <clears throat> they don't, they wanna protect the taxpayers, but they also don't wanna hurt local government. So it's a balancing act there to figure out how to make that work, so. Right, and make it as painless as possible. Absolutely. Well, one, one thing that's going on in Smith County, you know, uh, census projects us at 20,000 uh, people, uh, and they have been doing that for a long time. And w with that said, uh, I, I'm seeing more houses go up. Uh, that and, is true. And more building permits. Uh, what, what's going on with that? Well, uh, this so last year we did 128 new building permits, building structures. Uh, I thought this year, coming into this year, we would take a step back due to the fact interest rates had took that considerable jump. I mean, you're looking at home rates in the five and 6%, which we hadn't saw in years. So I thought to myself, I was like, well, we'll see a slowdown. But last I talked with Mike Nixon, we're probably within three or four of tying last year's <clears throat> record. And so it's not, we've not seen that slowdown. It continues to be some people want to live here. Well, it, it's it's the area. And I don't and know where why. We're at. I, I don't blame them. I mean, it's a, to me, to me, and you, and everybody listening. This is the greatest place in the world. So, well, I, why would I, you not? I want feel to be that here? way. Why exactly? Why yeah. would you not want to be here? And and uh, one thing that helps us is we're sandwiched between. Uh, you've got what they call a metropolitan uh, area, basically from Wilson County on into Davidson, right? And then you got what they call a micropolitan starting. In Putnam, Putnam County. County, yeah, and we're kind of in the middle, and and the squeeze is coming both ways, and we're seeing it, yeah, because of that. Well, and and uh, I I know uh, if you do a, a what do they call it, a money migration study, right, to to see where uh, tax uh, revenue, where people are paying their taxes, uh, people are moving from these areas into Smith County. Some people in Smith County are moving to some of the other smaller ones, but. Uh, I, we're definitely going to maintain our 20,000. Oh, I, yeah, I feel not, like we're going to grow. I, I do too. Uh, when I first came into office, the uh, it's the Boyd Center, maybe something to do with the Howard Baker Policy Institute and, and UT Knoxville had done a long range study of all the state and it showed us, now this was 2019 when I looked at it probably, it showed us growing 
right at 5% over total over the next 10 to 15 years. So, you know, 5% at that time, we were like 19,000. So you're looking at another thousand folks. Uh, I asked the other day to some folks that are tied to that, what that number looked like now, because COVID pandemic changed a lot of, I think changed that. I don't think they had, they saw that in their studies. So with the land grab and the move to Tennessee and Smith County, I wonder how that has affected the, the population trends for the, for the future for us. Well, it, it, there's, there's no doubt it's, it, people are being drawn to the state of Tennessee. And, 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 and again, Absolutely. You, you and I feel the same way, but uh, I feel like it's the best run, best uh, physically, kept yes. state in the, in yeah. the union and uh, fiscally, and, and we don't have an income tax and we're able to pay our bills without having an That's income right. tax. And our legislature, it looks to me like that question has been answered. So, right. so we're looking down the future at being very attractive for people to come in Absolutely. here from a tax standpoint. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, jumping subjects, I'll give a shout out to our state legislature this year uh, with the help of Governor Lee pushing it and uh, stop and brag on our state senator, Mr. Paul Bailey, and our yeah. state rep, Mr. Michael Hale, and the job they did for Smith County. In the year that they're the new year that we've had those guys has been tremendous uh we uh we were able they were able to push out a big transportation infrastructure spending bill this year which benefited smith county and the fact that they pushed out two and a half million dollars to uh mr barrett at the road commission in in, in to start the year and he's took that two and a half million dollars and uh paved finished uh buffalo road lakeside drive he only had it when he when he saved up his money, he had enough to do half of uh, Lakeside Drive. Well, this money, he was able to finish it. So it's paved now from the, the bridge and defeated to say to all the way back to Kentville. So that's done. I think he's uh, they finished Ross Creek down in the uh, uh, Rome Rock City area. And they just finished Bradford Hill last week. So he took and, and, and got a lot of paving done with that money. That uh, And he did a really good job of getting that $2.5 million spent. When they give it to you, and that that was that was one of the things they said is you know hey don't sit on this money go spend it that way we can go back and ask for more so we're hoping we did our part and they'll come back with another two and a half million dollars because in today's today's market you're looking it cost three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollars to pave a mile of road which is right. just you know used to that was you could get two to three miles for that money and so it's made it really hard on him to get those a lot of the our paved roads and, and and again that was three and there's probably 20 more of our paved roads that that got paved on what they call state aid that needs repaving resurfacing right now anyways uh he's done a tremendous job with the, his tar and chipping process uh i think since he's been in office he and i last i talked they had tarred and chipped over 60 miles of county roads uh so and he was able to buy a chip spreading machine this year with some of his they ARP dollars that we appropriated him, which has really helped his efficiency on getting his getting rock. I think the first mile he saved three truckloads of rock. So that's huge. I mean, that's that's huge. That's going forward. And so I know the weather's caught him now, but I know he's excited to get back at it in uh, in April, May, when the weather turns back to where they can tar and chip and do some more roads. Uh, he's targeting the worst roads in the in the all the areas that he can he's kind of looking at it from a district region area and uh, and is doing a really good job with that he's uh they we did a road study back first of this year and got it around february march and presented that to the commission and uh it was quite shocking what uh they basically came and evaluated every road we had its condition its long-term prospects and uh just to bring all our roads to a good condition. That's every tar and chip, every paved road in the county. That, that price tag was around $60 million. Wow, that's yeah. a big figure. That's a large figure, large figure. When, uh, when he's, he's receiving about $3 million a year in gas tax and we've been blessed, as I told somebody the other day, we've, we've dug up every mason jar and, got change out of every couch cushion we could find to give him an extra million dollars for the last two years. I and mean, he's been able to work that. Uh, that's one thing that's on my mind for 
24, 25 budget is, is there's got to be a, we got to figure out a way. We can't stop that progress that he's been able to do. So yeah. we got to figure out a way to get another million dollars to him for that, to, to ensure he can continue doing what he's doing. So right. that's yeah. something that, uh, I'm sure, uh, Mr. Barrett, myself and the commission will discuss over the next little bit going into the last half of fiscal year 23, 24. Right, and when, and when you actually asphalt pave a, a, a road like that, that extends the upkeep out yeah. to where at some point you're going to be caught up and, and able to do maintenance. Right, So uh, that's so, your hope, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that is a good thing. And, and I know uh, uh, some of the roads around here are still waiting to be looked they at. Are. They are. But, but people, uh, of course, it's, if, you, it, if it's your road, somebody says be patient. It kind of well, yeah. I mean, everybody it's a bad wants thing to everybody, say. Everybody, you know, everybody wants to, their road to be the worst, and, and and you know, and that's 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 human nature, and that's that's totally acceptable. I get it, I understand it, but uh, you know, we we got behind on a lot of our infrastructure spending as far as roads, and uh, it's a hole we're in, and he's he's doing he's digging, scraping, and fighting with everything he's got to get us out of that hole, and uh, we want to support him the best we can. Well, it took a long time to get where we, we were. Yeah, and we're not going to get out now, of it. Now we're trying to get out of it. Now. Exactly. And, and I think uh, people are seeing that. I the, do too. The do paving too. that's going on. I do too. I do too. Well, now, uh, uh, commercial businesses, uh, uh, that aspect of things, you know, we, we've had house building uh, up uh, uh, for sure. We, we've also uh, seen a lot had, of new businesses come to our downtown areas and Gornsville areas, you know, and, 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 that's that's you know that sales tax dollars that helps us all that gives you know that people it creates jobs it creates income it uh, it's the, it's a churn it's the money that's spent in the community turns back around and stays in the community so we're uh, I know everybody loves to use Amazon and Walmart and the big boxes today but uh, anytime you can run downtown and uh, grab a meal or you know. Uh, buy something from our, our, our people downtown or in Gornsville, it's, a, it's always a good thing. It, it's, it's a very good thing. And uh, correct me if I am wrong on this, but I believe our sales tax revenue has been on a steady increase. It has been, uh, it has been. For, Across, for, yeah, we're seeing a major jump in, you know, in sales tax issues over the past, well, ever since COVID started. Well, I'll say, <clears throat> let me back up. When the legislature passed that, that we're able to collect that tax at the point of buying so you know when someone in uh, pleasant shade bought a package from amazon smith county was able to claim smith county general was able to claim that tax revenue because it was bought out there that was huge for us you know used to that just went into a and then now it's more targeted to us and then you saw covid the pandemic come and people started spending more money at home and 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 and, and using those local products so that was a good thing. Well, it's a very good thing. And, and this is a, an area that a lot of people, because of what I am involved in, I, I know more about this, I guess, than uh, most people. But uh, our tourism dollars, uh, the state did a report here uh, in 2022. We had over 10 million, uh, it was over $10 million that was spent tourism-wise here in Smith County. And, and that's, a, that's a big revenue. And what's good about that is, is that these people are visiting, they're coming in doing business with our businesses and right. our venues, and uh, they're not really taxing our uh, schools or, or any of our infrastructure. You know, they're right. coming in and visiting. Right. And uh, tourism, I think, is, uh, uh, well, in the state, <clears throat> agriculture's number one, tourism's number two. I think Smith County can see an increase in our tourism dollars because of the Caney Fork River and, and some of the amenities that right. we have in the Cumberland River and Cordell Hall uh, Lake and then yeah. uh, of course we, we're close to some of the other draws around here and I think as a region and we're going to start seeing more tourists come in here. I, 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 I don't disagree with that. I, what And I, I tell the people a lot of time is I would love to see more tourist targeted businesses pop up in Smith County so we exactly. can capture more of that money. I mean we sometimes we uh, don't see what we want to see as far as capturing that dollar. You're talking about dollar migrations. I think if we could figure out a way to capture all of those dollars would be huge for us. It sure would. Well, and, and you take downtown Carthage uh, in and in of itself, uh, you've got a look there that is uh, something that's fast disappearing in a lot of towns it is. around the country. And, and I think it that's is. one of the things that draws people to Tennessee is we've been able to 
uh, maintain our, that feel and that look. Our downtowns are are still holding on to that, and there and and there there was a time that you know our downtowns were suffering because you had the big box stores come and you had the migration out of the downtown areas, mm -hmm. and uh, we've uh, we, we're seeing a resurgence in that. I mean, we've you just look downtown now. You know the restaurants that have came in the past five years. The the coffee shop. The I mean. Yeah, well, our, our retail you're, stores we've got. I noticed Kobe had a had a tea this morning. I mean, we have two tea places in this county that are both of them stay busy and are doing well. You know, I didn't. Yeah. You know, five ten years ago, we would all sit around and went, "Well, there's no way how, I'll how pay they going to do that six yeah. bucks for a glass of tea." But here we are. I mean, it just it, you're seeing a change in people's spending habits and what they buy them spend their money on and. And that's a good thing. That, that, that is a good thing. And, and the things that are going on downtown, I think, uh, I, I jokingly uh, told somebody, I've, I've been in this job, it'll be going on 12 years. And I, I jokingly told somebody, I, I said, when I first started in this job, you could have laid down on Main Street and slept. Right. And uh, that was a joke, but th there was some truth to that. There was. And now, 10 years later, we're seeing a resurgence in our downtown. And I think uh, the future looks really bright for that part. Well, and you, you know, when you look at downtown, DT McCall's has always been kind of the anchor point. Right, big, big retail. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, you talk to people across the state, and they'll say, yeah, I came to Cartridge one time, went to DT McCall's and bought so-and-so. So that's drawing people in, but now we have the businesses downtown that capture them to stay and maybe spend a few extra dollars, which, right. is, which is what you want. I mean, it's everybody, Everybody works together, and it makes it good for everybody, I believe. Well, and, and we've talked about uh, commercial and tourism and like that. Well, industry, we're... we're Industry's good. Of course, we took a little little setback with the mine pausing. Uh, I, I read an article the other day in the New York Times where uh, the germanium... And, and I hope the gallium. I'm, gallium and germanium is, is going to be at this center point of a trade war between the United States and China. And that's one thing they're building that smelting plant in Clarksville to do that. And I'm quite sure, I mean, I know that there is germanium and gallium here. They've just not refined the process of getting it out. But I think this pause is kind of giving them a chance there. So if they can get to that point, that's going to ensure, you know, that long-term future of that mine, not only on the zinc side, but those things that go into the new electric battery craze with you know, your electronics and maybe your cars you know we won't get into that discussion here today bill I think. yeah well uh, uh yeah we we'll leave that one for another time <laughs> but uh, uh the the future is definitely uh uh looking brighter I, I think from so. that standpoint I think so. for the mind and uh i know this is a tough time uh, uh with it pausing like it is uh, right. you got people that were hauling and absolutely and, uh, people yeah, that were the, ancillary the, to it that, that's that what hurts affected. worse than anything yeah i mean is those guys took a hit on that but uh you know i like to say i think i think we'll be back i think everything will be good uh there yeah i think i think so too and and then the other industries that we've got it, as far as i can tell they're they're solid they're, you know they're doing good right has been yeah, here our, what since the uh early 60s and, and they're still, still going continues. strong uh, i think our unemployment rate is still Right around that three number, maybe a little under. Right, and uh, I read a, a article here uh, just a few days ago. The entire state of Tennessee uh, unemployment for the entire state is going to be under f the five point, yes. which is phenomenal when phenomenal. you think about Absolutely. it. Absolutely, I mean, you take five. Well, I, I did the numbers the other day, and it was uh, so they said our workforce participation rate was around ten thousand. So if you say ten thousand people are in the workforce and three percent of those are unemployed, that's 300 people yeah yeah it's a pretty small number i know uh if you're uh if you're in a business right here now uh you're you're looking for people yeah. to hire yeah yeah so 300 people and you know we mean you could probably find them a job today yeah 300 people most likely i, I know denise uh Gibbonson, she right. she's our uh, uh vice president of the chamber of commerce and uh, uh, she runs uh, staffing the staffing, uh, yeah, HG staffing, and uh, they're always looking for people, you know, sure. to send somebody sure. over. So I, th I think uh, uh, employment prospects are very good in right. Smith County too. Right. Well, uh, let's see. We've we've talked. Uh, we've covered all the subjects. Is there uh, one that we missed that you might want to address? 
just, you know, uh, wow, well, so many things. I mean, we've we've come a long way and, and, and still got a long ways to go. Uh, you know, we're looking, you know, as, as, as I sit here, and that's something that uh, we've talked about is, you know, as bad as I hate to spend taxpayer money, there's coming, you know, there's things that are going to have to be done as we sit in this building today, the Turner Building, Turner Building. <clears throat> needs roofing new new fiber uh connections run and, and and the old infrastructure we have the old courthouse which we're actively going after a grant for that the tennessee economic developments came out with a, what they're calling a broadband grant which if we can achieve that there'll be a two million dollar boom to help us uh remodel the courthouse with if with the with the part of the requirements for that is is that we we create a spot inside the courthouse for public access for Wi-Fi. So basically, an internet cafe in there where you, people, students, business people come in, use our Wi-Fi, do their work, and go home. Uh, would love to be able to, re, you know, remodel that middle middle floor and get it into a, a community room for, you know, part of that is for industry and businesses to be able to do training and also be able to move move back and be able to to meet our county commission in the old courthouse where it should be. I, one of my plans would be to move my office back to the courthouse and maybe finance on the third floor. So that would be something, because if you're going to spend two to three million dollars on remodeling something, you really need to use it. I mean, we don't need to just let it sit vacant like it's had before. So, you know, that would be my goals with that. You know, and all that in, comes back on uh, getting that grant and hoping we can get it. But uh, Right, and, and, and there's uh, uh, several pieces to that. I know uh, we're, we're working with the one gentleman on doing the windows. Windows. And, uh, of course, you've got your got heating HVAC, and air. looking but, at that. But that, that is a classic uh, building that it, it's been a part of our, well, since the 1890s. Yeah, it's our history. And it's, it's our history. It's a so beautiful old building. And, yeah. We definitely need to, to support that. that. Yeah. But... Uh, uh, a lot of good things going on in Smith County. Uh, uh, these right grants now, that we've tried right to... now in the process of uh, demoing out the old Kids Central and putting in. A, hopefully by spring we'll have a new, updated, all-inclusive playground there. Uh, looking forward to seeing that. And excited to see that. Uh, Kids Central was a great thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of it was wood structure, and, and you and I know that. That area has a lot of fog, a lot of, and, and then the and the, the flood. floods. So that wood kind of deteriorated, and I've had a ton of people ask me about the uh, the the old name pl plackets that were sold in there. And a lot of times, what we found is if they weren't kicked out or rotted out when we took them apart, they basically crumbled in your hand. So, but we uh, we have plans of making a more permanent reminder and to memor not memorialize, but to give recognition to the people on the front end for. Uh, Kid Central that did all the hard work and the donations on the front end. So something that we can be proud of and stay and not have to, maybe not have to worry about uh, rot as much. Exactly, and that, that's a good upgrade for that. It is. And uh, uh, another thing to add to uh, uh, TWRA is working with us. Working with you, and yeah. We we did the uh, ARAP uh, application. Uh, right. I don't know you you filled right. that out. And, and that's uh, behind the depot area. We, we should have that uh, uh, kayak access uh, coming in here sometime this winter. At least that's the plan right yeah, now. Yeah, that'll be good. So that gives us a better opportunity there and uh, a better spot. So looking forward to that. And I know you're working with Gornsville and their ramp and some things over there for those guys. Down yeah, we're, we're hoping that uh, TWRA and, uh, and uh, City of Gornsville, we can get a shelter over there and maybe some uh, Bathroom. bathrooms. Yeah, that'd be huge. And uh, that, that would be a huge thing. And it, it'll help in our, our tourism initiative. Absolutely. Well, well, and, and uh, locals too, you know, yeah. uh, there are a tremendous about, amount of local people that go to the Caney Fork River and, and the Cumberland River oh, yeah. uh, and oh, yeah. fish and, 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 and kayak and, and, and yeah. kayaking and recreation. So uh, uh, we, we've got a lot of good things going on here. We do. Uh, Mayor, it's it's toward the end of the year and, uh, you know, December, everything. And, Coming and I'm, on I'm the, sure the, the holidays, we just rolled out of Thanksgiving and yeah. Christmas is you know, a couple of weeks away and, uh, it's been, uh, on the personal side, it's been a, it's been a interesting at times trying year, but the good Lord has seen us through it. My wife was diagnosed with breast cancer back in, uh, June and, uh, we're on the back half of that and everything's looking good. And I, I just want to be able right now, Bill, to, to tell everyone to this community, this county, the people 
to thank you for your prayers, thank you for your gifts, your encouragement. I mean, I didn't go any, hardly went anywhere where somebody didn't ask me how my wife was, and uh, it's just it's it's been the most humbling experience we've we wanted to, that we went through. That you know, just to see the love and the 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 support that was spread upon me and my family, and I just I'll forever be thankful for that, and I thank. Thank the good, most of all, thank the good Lord above for his healing hands and, and getting her through this. And, uh, but uh, it's, I thank you to this community and the citizens for that. It's, I truly believe we are what's right with the world and, 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 that's, and it continues to show me that. But as we go into this Christmas season, you know, uh, it, it is, as they say, the most wonderful time of the year and, and it is. And, uh, we we don't need to lose fact lose lose the fact that 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 we are celebrating the birth of our Savior as as, as Christian in a Christian nation. Uh, that is the most important part. But also just having that time with our friends and our family and and getting together and, exactly. and, and spending yeah. that time and just seeing the beautiful decorations and the you know there seems like there's a little pep in everybody's step this time of year when when you're getting into this time. You know kids are excited, grown ups are still excited too. For those things, and it's it's you know it's it's beautiful. This is my fifth Christmas in office. And of course, you know we got through the parades and the tree lighting, and always enjoy this time of year. Uh, seems like this year's been a little busier. Sometimes we see a little lull this time of year, but I've not saw the lull. Uh, well, if you if you noticed, uh, like the Christmas parades that we had, I believe that b both of them were bigger than they ever than I've ever. Yes, and and the weather was not good for either oh, one of them. But uh, a lot of people standing and watching, a lot of people participating. So that's a that's a great thing and a good thing to see. Yeah, uh, one one thing I, I I'm going to jump back a little bit. Uh, okay, it's the fiftieth anniversary for the Chamber of Commerce this June. Okay, and so uh, we're going to be celebrating that this coming year, and that's something that's coming up. That's and uh, that's I want to say I appreciate uh, the support and and uh, the chamber was formed to try and uh, be a, a part of the county that helped help encourage growth right. and encourage businesses and industry and, and all of that and could not have been done without the support of the local government over the years and since 1974. 1974. Uh, uh, we've we've well, had that support and we appreciate that. And Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the work y'all do and thank you for those that before us that got that started and saw that vision and was able to get that done. I mean, I know uh, it's always been a uh, something that hit, you're right, has been here to help drive those businesses and help support, help support existing businesses and grow new businesses and we uh, we work hard every day to get that done, and appreciate. Almost forgot another 50th anniversary that we saw this year was the 50th anniversary of the Cordell Hall Dam. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, got to go to you know a big celebration for that. Uh, that was a that was a good day and a good thing. You know, it's uh, that was a this has been a huge thing for us. I mean, when you've got two power plants within 15 miles of each other, that's I guess where the crow flies. That's a that's a really good thing, and and it shows that well, you know. It's been good for our economy. It has been. Uh, and and uh, I know uh, Center Hill is in DeKalb County mostly, and, and Cordell Hall is in mostly Smith and then St. Right. Jackson. But uh, our our economies are all tied together. They are. And it's, it's helped it all of us. works together, absolutely. It sure has. Mayor, uh, uh, what I want to do is kind of say... As Randy Hattie and I joked at the celebration that day, he wanted to claim part of the lake, and I said, well, we'll give you part of the lake, but the dam's in us. So, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and you know, the, the folks in Jackson County, uh, it's been really good to work with them. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's some fine folks up there, and, and in, in DeKalb as well. Well, I, and, I'll put the Upper Cumberland region against anybody as far as, as how we operate and how we're a part. I mean, we... We as mayors look as look at it always as if as what's the success for Smith County is the success for the region and what's the success for DeKalb County, Cumberland County, Fincher County, Jackson County, White County is the success for us too because right. it, it it just if we look regionally, you know, I think you know, number one we gotta take care of Smith County in our own, but if we can grow Smith County and we can grow the upper Cumberland region, the, all that does is help the state, which helps the nation, which, you know, makes us better. Yeah, and then there's no doubt there's a good dynamic here in Upper Cumberland. And Absolutely. Smith County is a big part of that. Mayor, I, I want to kind gateway of say... To, gateway to the Upper Cumberland is what I like to call it. There you go. Exactly, and that's what we are. Uh, I want to segue out of here and okay. maybe let you just have the last word if you want to just uh, 
kind of, I don't know, uh, greeting, uh, blessing, whatever you need. Okay. Well, thank you, Bill. Uh, again, it's, it's the Christmas season. I want to, for me and my family, I want to wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And may the love and the and the and the spirit of this season wrap you all. I know it's it's a great time for some, but it's a hard time for others. Others have lost loved ones, and it's always tough. And sickness is never far from around the corner. But uh, know that uh, we we're here for you. We're ne we, we, I love each and every one of you. I have the greatest job in the world because I serve the greatest people. And I, I there's a lot of days that I pinch myself and say. Wow, I really get to do this, and and, and it and it, it is truly an honor and a pleasure. This is, uh, I'm, I, it's still it's just hard to believe sometimes that I, it's five years in, but I still get to believe that I'm I'm getting to do this. And uh, like I, you know, I've told the story a lot of times. I didn't see this, but I'm sure glad the good Lord led me down this road, and uh, I hope to get to uh, stay and do this as long as He wants me to, and uh, continue to do the best we can for this county. Uh, have we made mistakes and stumbles? Absolutely. We'll, and we'll continue to have those opportunities to, to overcome something that we didn't see coming. But uh, uh, at the end of the day, I, I always, always one of the things that I, I preach and, and, and I tell people, uh, I don't, you know, I want to make it hard to spend your money because it is our money. It's not my money, it's not Bill's money, it's not Cody's money, it's our money. So we try to make the best decisions we can with that money to do what's right and provide the services that, that I believe that government should be providing. And uh, we, uh, again, I just appreciate, appreciate the opportunity to, to serve and lead. And uh, I just, this is, I said it many times, it's the greatest place in the world and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Uh, thank you all. And uh, may God bless you, may God bless Smith County, and may God bless America. Thank you. Now we'd like to invite you to tune in to In the Wild with Mr. Gabe Harville. Hello, everybody. I'm Gabe Harville, and welcome back to another episode of In the Wild. As this year draws to an end, I had some reflecting to do upon the future of my Facebook page. And looking back, I realized I had never done an episode over white-tailed deer. Seeing how they're so prevalent in our area, it's a wonder I never thought to do one. So without further ado, deer. Since we are in the month of December, many people will start looking for deer up in the sky. But all you have to do in reality is look out your back window because deer are liable to be there. However, it was not always this way. White-tailed deer were once plentiful all across the United States. That slowly changed as European settlers began to overhunt them for food, clothing, and then for sport. However, thanks to good management practices and game laws, the white-tailed deer population has dramatically bounced back. In Tennessee, the population has rebounded from an approximate low of 2,000 deer in the 1940s to over 900,000 deer today. As you can see here, no try to keep my voice low as to not spook them but I count one two three white-tailed deer just outside our backyard and this is quite a popular spot to see them around our house they love edge habitat and though it's not a soft edge and Rosie takes notice of them as well <laughs> though it's not a soft edge meaning just a gradual tapering out of vegetation coming from a mature forest to open field. But this is, this is prime deer habitat. They love to come feed, loaf, and just kind of hang around these spots because that's where all their requirements are met. You, if you could hear that, that was a white-tailed deer snort and the tails have begun to raise that shows that they sense danger is nearby the danger likely being us and Rosie of course but that white patch of fur that they are exposing is a signal to others that danger is present 
and that is also how they receive their name, the white-tailed deer. As we come to the close of this episode, I'd like to leave you with one fun fact about the white-tailed deer. Contrary to many people's beliefs, antlers are not a reliable way to tell a deer's age. It is better judged by the wear of their teeth, much like sheep and cattle. Back from the brink of extinction, white-tailed deer have come to populate every county of our great state. From the Mississippi River to the Great Smoky Mountains, they provide a source of recreation and food, not only for us, but for their predators, helping to keep their ecosystems in balance. This has been Gabe Harville. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I hope to see you next year in the wild. I bet that's not the geese at the pond. I bet they're flying to the river. We just can't see them because of the trees. Are you videoing? Contrary to most people, antlers are... Wait, contrary to most people. As we come to the close of this episode, I'd like to leave you with some fun facts about the white-tailed deer. This type of deer... <laughs> uh, should I keep going? It is better judged by the wear of their teeth. Much similar to... Much similar? Good night. Back from the brink of extinction, deer have come to populate every county of our state where they provide an excellent hunting quarry for our hunters and a f f dog. I think he's some kind of coyote. Uh, they provide a source of recreation and food for humans as well as their predators. Gosh, here they provide a no, gosh. All right. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey, it's, it's great to have you here with us. Tell them who you are, who you with. I'm Kayla Franklin. I'm from the Smith County Drug Prevention Coalition. All right. And you guys are located on Water Street, right? Yes. We are located right beside Domino's. That's the best way I tell people yeah. where to find us at. Yeah. And uh, uh, so you got a lot of things going on today. Well, I actually just came and I wanted to remind everybody that um, this holiday season could be um, hard for those people living with substance use disorder. Um, and I wanted to share uh, the meetings that we have here in Smith County, uh, the recovery meetings. You do not have to be a recovering addict to join us. Um, you could just have a desire to stop using. Um, so I wanted to read those meetings off that sure, we have that here in Smith great. County. Yeah. Um, on Sundays, we have a NA meeting at the spot at uh, 5 o'clock p.m. On Tuesdays and Fridays, we have Celebrate Recovery at Carthage Church of God at 6.30. On Wednesdays, there's an AA step study at Carthage Church of God at 6.30. On Thursdays, there is Hope for Life at Carthage Full Gospel at 6.30. And on Saturdays, there is an AA meeting at 5 o'clock at the spot. And Celebrate Recovery is for um, all different walks of life. It's not just for a recovering uh, drug addict. It is for recovering um, from overeating. You could struggle with um, codependency or um, sexual addictions, just anything uh, we all have hurts, hang-ups, and habits. We're all really recovering from something, and Celebrate Recovery is a great place to just have a um, support team and uh, a community to surround you to help you walk through those things. And um, But NA and AA, um, those are more specific, but they are still a great community with whatever you're struggle is okay well i know you guys do a lot of different things in the community but uh if somebody was questioning hey how do i find out about this what, what's your all's contact information yes so you can contact us at 615-588-1622 i also wanted to share that if you or a loved one is struggling with um 
drug addiction, gambling addiction, um, you can call the Tennessee Red Line number. You can call or text this number. So that's great. Some people are more comfortable texting, but it's 1-800-889-9789. And so that's a great resource that we have as well. We okay. just wanted to share with everyone about. Well, Kayla, I, I know uh, during the holidays, like you said, a lot of people, uh, it's, it's a very happy time of year, mm -hmm. but it's also uh, a very stressful time of year for a lot of folks. Yeah. And so uh, these these things being available, that, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. So, uh, okay, well, uh, thank you for coming by. Yes. I hope you guys have a great Christmas. And you tell uh, Tammy and, and uh, let's see, who? who Tell who's down there with you. Okay, so I have a, a partner who's also a prevention coordinator. Her name's Emily Longview. Um, she is our, my right hand man. She's such a wonderful person she, to work she with. Sure is. She's, She's great. Um, and then we have our director, Tammy London, and she is also just as wonderful. Uh, we have two ropes in our office, so that's a regional overdose prevention specialist. Um, they do like Narcan trainings, recovery resources. That is Suzanne Angel and Justin Contrell. And then we have a lifeliner who um, can connect you with recovery restore resources, be a family support for someone um, that's struggling with substance use disorder. Uh, he has a long line of things. He can do some trainings as well. Um, he gets people into treatment, uh, things like that. But his name is Chris Hodges. So. And then we have uh, our newest employee is our youth prevention coordinator. So he has started a youth coalition. So that's wonderful yes, um, of students that want to see a difference made with um, just decisions in general, not necessarily all about um, drug addiction, but um, that's going great. And they meet, um, I think you have to be between sixth and 12th grade. They meet at the spot the first Monday of every month and they have a meeting together and um his name is preston london so okay well uh, you got a lot of good things going on yes. we're really glad you're in the community well hope you all have a merry christmas you too thank you thank you for having us okay we're uh interviewing folks around the county that are doing great things in our county rachel Tell them who you are, who you with. My name is Rachel Petty, and I'm the 4-H agent at the UT Extension Office in Smith County. Okay, now I know you guys always have a lot of things going on, but I'm sure you came to talk about one thing in particular. Yes, so, um, well, this is actually my first um, chamber show since I've been the 4-H agent, um, so I wanted to introduce myself to all of you guys. Um, if you're familiar with the UT Extension Office, I am probably not a new face. Um, I've been the administrative assistant at the office for the past three years, and then recently in September, I transitioned um, into the 4-H role. We've all kind of played musical chairs um, in the office the past year. Uh, Chris Hicks, who was our ag agent, left in January, and then Katie took his position and I took Katie's position and as of September 1st I hit the ground running um, and we've been wide open ever since okay well what programs have you got going on right now uh, I know this is a holiday season so you're probably thinking more about what's going to start next uh, year in 24, but, but what you got going on right now? Right, that's right. So we've been doing a lot of our um, end of the year reporting and kind of thinking forward um, to the next year. But for 4-H um, in November, um, and then I'll actually finish up with my last club tomorrow. Um, so a couple to knock out in December, but we've been doing our county speech contest. Um, so speeches, hearing a lot of speeches in the classroom, um, and then preparing for that county speech contest where all the winners are going to come together and that's going to happen on December 12th and I love listening to speeches I feel like I learn a lot from the kiddos I um, mean that's a skill that they're going to use throughout their lives and I try to emphasize that when I meet with them you know sometimes in school we like to think that you're not going to use what you're learning um, but the public speaking skills and those life skills that we stress in 4-H are things that those kids are going to use throughout their lives oh, and good skills to start practicing there, now. There's no doubt about it and I had the privilege of uh, judging uh, a couple of times I was very impressed with the level at which uh, some of these grade school kids are at, and it's it's impressive how you guys are helping these guys. Absolutely, and it really gives you hope for the future um, to hear no those kids be so well spoken um, and practiced at their speeches. 
Okay, now I know you can't speak for her, but Mary usually has something with FCE going on, or are they pretty quiet this time of year? So they're kind of um, going on, lots of things going on all of the time. Um, I know her FCE clubs meet in December. They usually do their Christmas parties, um, so lots of, of fellowship and gathering um, in, in the FCE world. Um, and then we are also kind of all as an office, um, maybe a little more Katie and Mary than uh, my program area, but we are getting ready for our home and farm school. And so that is going to be an event on January the 9th at Smith County Middle School. And it is going to be um, open to anyone. We're going to have lots of different classes and programs. Um, so we're going to feed you that night. It is free to attend. We're going to have a sponsored meal and then lots of different breakout sessions. So anything from Mary's FCS programming. Um, I know she's working with some other agents from surrounding counties. She's going to do a charcuterie class um, and a couple other kind of home related topics. And then Katie's getting some agriculture speakers to come in. We're going to have some beef and forage programming which is always popular um, with locals here and then um, I know there's going to be a forestry um, some forestry wildlife type programming as well so kind of whatever you're interested in kind of all the things we do across extension um, we would love to have you come out to that home and farm school if you are new to extension maybe you haven't um, done any of our programming before that's a great way to learn about all the different things we do and get to know us um, and if you're an extension regular we would love to see you um, let us feed you come out and maybe you'll learn something okay and and once again say when that is so it is going to be um january the 9th at smith county middle school and i believe it starts at five o'clock okay so that's a really good program that you can get involved in and you don't have to be a member or have ever been to anything before you can just call and sign up for that, right? That's correct. Um, and then this one is a free event. Um, so we would just love to have you come out and learn more about Extension and learn about some of our different program areas and all the different things um, that we do. Um, and we're kind of far reaching in the community. A lot, Lots of people think about kind of that Master Beef program, or maybe they know that Mary has FCE clubs um, or, you know, their kids are in 4-H, but we have a ton of programs, a ton of different topics kind of for what you're interested in, um, in agriculture and beyond. Okay, and, and Katie uh, obviously can't speak for her, but uh, she has several programs going on, and, and I'm, I'm, the established farmers around here would know what she has available, but Katie has a lot of things that she can help. Like if you were a beginning farmer or trying to figure out, can I do this or should I do this? She's the person to call, right? Absolutely. So we get a lot of calls for people who have just moved into the area, uh, maybe wanting to start farming on some land that they've built, or maybe wanting to diversify if they've had a cattle operation for several years, wanting to you know get into something new, kind of test the waters. We have lots of research about that. UT has several different experiment stations located throughout the state where they're doing that research to see what works in this climate, work, what works well here. We have a Center for Profitable Agriculture that has has lots of resources um, if you're interested in some of those value added things if you're selling directly to consumers wanting to try something new on your farm maybe wanting to get people out to your farm in a sort of agritourism situation they have lots of resources for people like that um, and even for you know home gardeners um, we have some lawn and landscape resources and we can also do soil testing and um, that's a big thing that a lot of people come to us for um, on the agriculture side and kind of this time of year maybe um, as you're thinking to the spring when you're going to get that garden planted and um, we can do a soil test and tell you what you need if you're interested in growing specific crops. Um, UT has a lab in Nashville where they process all of that and then they give the results back to us so that we can share with you. Okay. Well, Rachel, uh, I guess give them the contact number again and uh, um unless you can think of something else. Yeah, I think that's pretty much covered it. Um, but that home and farm school is what we're really excited about. That's kind of the next thing coming up. So we would love to see you there. Um, and if you need any information from any of us at the Extension Office, you can give us a call at 615-735-2900. All right. Rachel, thanks for coming. Back. Of course. Thanks, Bill. Merry Christmas. You too. Well, in December, we have a lot of guests that come by, and, and we're so glad. Uh, tell you what, tell them who you are and who you with. I'm Kelly Davis, and I'm with Glitzy Girls Southern Kitchen. Okay, uh, Kelly. Now, Glitzy Girls Southern Kitchen. Uh, I'm in my mind. I have a concept, but what what do you guys do? Uh, we do uh, brisket and barbecue and things like that. Okay. So, uh, is this is this like a food truck uh, setup, or is it in an actual location, or where are you? 
It's a food truck. We're just kind of all over right now. Okay. All right. So if uh, someone wanted to get in touch with you, say, for instance, they wanted brisket for uh, uh, an event or something's going on, you would do that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, how would they get in touch with you? Uh, they can find us on Facebook. We have a Glitzy Girl Southern Kitchen page and also at 615-922-0501. Now, you mentioned brisket and barbecue, right? Mm hmm Okay, what, what else you got? We have hamburgers, hot dogs, fried pickles, bacon ranch fries, and in the summer we do chocolate-covered strawberries, things in that nature. Okay, that, that sounds really good. And uh, you're home-based here in Smith County, right? Yes, sir. Okay. What, what community, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't ask that, but what community are, are do your kids, they go to school here locally, I'm sure? Yes, sir. We're out and defeated. Okay, so you're you're on the uh, beautiful end of the right at the Cordell Hall Lake and all of that stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah, a lot of folks are moving into uh, in the defeated area because of uh, the way it looks and it's out there. Uh, I think uh, uh, I'm getting off subject a little bit, but our population is about twenty thousand here in the county, and uh, we're not scheduled to grow, but maybe four or five percent. But I think a lot of folks are finding defeated a good place to, to live and to be. So, so you're so. in a good part of the county, no doubt about mm -hmm. that. Okay, uh, well, uh, what we would like to do is uh, get let people know that you're out there and, and you can do that. So give them that contact number again in that Facebook uh, setup. It's uh, on Facebook, it's Glitzy Girls Southern Kitchen, and the phone number is 615-922-0501. Okay, well, we really appreciate you coming by, and have a Merry Christmas, okay? Merry Christmas to you, and thank you. Well, every once in a while, we have a unique business come into town, and I, I think uh, yours is unique. But first, would you introduce yourself and tell them who you're with? Hi, I'm Carrie Kirchenberg, and I own Canine Comfort Paws, which is a, a grooming business, uh, self-wash, dog wash, spa experience. We have a boutique inside of it and a bakery, dog bakery. And then uh, I've been a canine trainer for the government for 19 years. So I also do uh, in-flight service canine training. So if you like to travel with your dogs, I do that. Okay, well now I've got a lot of questions and I hope I uh, remember all of them. Sure. Uh, first thing is uh, you, you said grooming. So mm -hmm. can someone bring their dog uh, and, and get it groomed at your place? So they bring their dog and they groom them themselves. They bring their dog and they groom them themselves. Mm -hmm. So we have the tubs and the nail clippers and the table, the blow dryer, anything that a groomer would have. We have it in separate rooms. Each dog has their own room. We have four separate rooms for you to take your dog and have the whole spa experience, but you do it yourself. But we do have a groomer that will be on site so if you need any assistance with nail clipping, clippings or sanitary cleanups or just basic trimming of your dog, we have somebody that's there that can help. Okay, well now that, that's so good. Let me back up, I should have asked this first. Uh, wh where exactly are you located? 217 Upper Ferry Road. So just down the road right here, before you turn the curve, we're right there on that corner. Okay, so you're on the corner mm -hmm. uh, as you turn to go up uh, water, uh, Spring Street. Uh, I think it's right before Spring Street. It's before Spring Street. Yeah, I think it's right before Spring Street. So is it Main Street that you turn when it curves to the right to get to that light? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's right on the corner of Main and Upper Ferry. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so so that's a good, uh, easy location to get yeah. to. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to wear this out. Uh, sure. wh what's the phone number again? Uh, 615-626-2826. Okay, so uh, people can bring their dog and they, they can groom them there. Uh, what what other uh, unique ideas do you have going on in? Oh, okay. Structure? So we have a boutique that um, caters to personalizing dog uh, collars, leashes, uh, Christmas necklaces. He's wearing one right now, um, and a bakery that caters to all kinds of dog needs. So different kinds of allergies, things things of that sort. Uh, I've been baking dog treats for my own dogs for years, so I'm bringing that into the shop as well. Okay, well, then I guess we've actually insulted him. Uh, we didn't introduce your friend here. Oh, so this is Brecken. <laughs> he will be five months on the 6th, and he's in training for search and rescue for Smith County, actually. Okay, and he yeah. is a St. Bernard. He's a St. Bernard, yes. He's and, one uh, of three. 
How long does it take you to train a dog for service? About nine months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about nine months. By 13 months, you know if they can do it or not. So okay. anywhere between nine and 13 months for a full trained service dog. Okay, well now how's he going so far? Is he's he... doing good. He's had two visits to Disneyland and about 50,000 flight miles. So he's doing pretty good. <laughs> so, sounds like he's yeah, doing Yeah, he's doing pretty good. Okay, well now you said you've been training dogs for years. Yeah. What, what's your, uh, tell us a little bit about your background. So, um, so training has always been something that I've done voluntarily, but I did start at the age of 19 training with the California Highway Patrol. I had a German Shepherd and my neighbor had a cadaver um, search dog. And so he invited me to one of their training sessions and we trained, we trained him and mm -hmm. he actually trained um, for, actually trained and worked for about nine years and we did uh, ground zero 9-11 and he found 97 bodies so oh, wow. he's he's just been he was just a great dog and so ever since then I've just been really interested in providing a service with my dogs I think that a well-trained dog is a good dog okay and, and you said it takes about did I nine, months nine months to 13 months before you know if your dog is really uh, able to be a service trained dog Okay. Yeah. And uh, how many, like, are you going to continue to train, dog, like, for when Brecken here is finished with his training, will you start another one? Will you so Brecken is mine, and I will be his handler, so he will he will work with me for any calls that we get, um, but I do train other people's dogs for service, uh, including balance assist, uh, PTSD, and psychiatric assistance. So mm -hmm. I do those training of dogs as well, behavioral training. That'll also happen out of the shop as well. Okay, well, it sounds like you're geared more toward uh, medical and service. What if a person just needed a dog to just be better behaved? Yeah, behavioral training, absolutely. We do that as well, absolutely. So if, if I uh, found a dog that we loved, say at a, a shelter, brought it home and there were certain things it wouldn't do. I could bring him over to you and yeah. we could work together mm -hmm. and, and get him to where he Yeah, I can do that either virtually. I can come to your home or you can come to the shop. It's whatever works. Basically, training your dog is best if we do it at your home because it's in its environment and that's usually where they're, they're, they're at their worst. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because it's really not the training only of the dog, it's the training of the owner as well. Right, because yeah. we have bad habits that That's we right. transmit to the animal. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, it's training of everybody. It yeah. really is because you can confuse a dog just like you can confuse a child. Mom says yes, dad says no, and does it really mean no when dad says no? Or does it really mean yes, but we better ask our mom? So it's kind of <laughs> like that. It works pretty similar. And, and animals, uh, dogs are smart enough to pick up on things. That's like right. That. Yeah. Dogs are just as smart as kids. They know where to push buttons, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, and I was raised on a farm. We had uh, animals like that all my life. Yeah. And uh, I'm in a period right now where we don't have a dog. Okay. And, and, and honestly, it's because the last one was so, so good. Bad. Yeah, oh, yeah, something to compare it to, yeah, right? Yeah, so good, and it, it's hard to... Uh, it's, it's hard to replace. Well, like I tell that. everybody, start right when you get him. I mean, three days after I got Brecken, he was on an airplane. So start right away. I do a lot of exposure training, mm -hmm. lots of exposure mm -hmm. training, because the more you expose your dogs to different situations, the better they are. Well, and I can see how that would be a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I thank you for coming by. Is there anything we missed? No, um, we're going to try and open the shop by January 5th. Uh, we're still in the build out stages. It needed uh, some extra plumbing that we needed to do. And so we've got everything that we need. And now it's just building it up. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it, give that contact number one last time. 615 626 2826. And the website is www.caninecomfortpaws.com. Okay. Well, uh, like I say, a unique business. And yeah. I think, uh, I think Smith County is ready for that. Well, we're excited to be here. I'm so excited to be part of Smith County. Okay. Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you for being here. You're welcome.